my lovely little gemstones, it's Afira, and today I'll be reading Riddle Me This by Quarantine Vibes. Chapter 2. The Dream Door Is that all you're bringing? Remus shifted and tossed his mace from hand to hand before pointing it at Logan, who had a large backpack so stuffed that the nerd was practically falling over. I like to pack light, Remus replied. It was nighttime, and Thomas had just gone to bed, which meant that Remus and Logan needed to make their way into Thomas's dreamscape. Remus waved his hand, and a large black wooden door appeared in front of them. Ivy vines crept along its edges, and mysterious dark stains outlined the wooden pattern. Soft music began playing, and Logan wrinkled his nose. Is that Hilary Duff? Remus groaned. That was Roman's addition to the dream door, he explained, as what dreams are made of played around them. Remus looked down at the knob. Normally, he and Roman couldn't go in. They could only influence the dreams from the outside. Whatever happened in Thomas's mind after that became a mix of that influence and his own memories. Looking now, though, the padlock that usually sealed the door was popped open. Well, no time like the present, Remus cheered and threw open the door. But before he could go through, Logan held him back. Wait, he said, closed the door and pointed at Remus. Before we enter, as one of Thomas's creative sides, do you have any information about the dreamscape? We should gather some background information before entering. Remus groaned and sat down on the floor. Ugh, but that takes all the fun out of it. Logan raised an eyebrow. I'm not trying to be fun. I'm trying to be effective. Now, please, answer the question. Remus furrowed his eyebrows. There it was again, that strange tone that Logan had, as if he expected Remus to be helpful, as if he expected anything of Remus at all. Well, Remus said and tapped his chin with his foot. I know that we won't go into Thomas's target dream right away. The dreamscape is unstable like that. Logan nodded, producing a notebook out of his back and scribbling something down. Remus blinked. Was Logan taking notes on what he was saying? Uh, Remus started again, not sure why he was suddenly feeling uncomfortable. And I'm also pretty sure we can't conjure in there. Logan nodded and pointed at his pack. Yes, I figured as much. Additionally, because people tend to have several dreams in one night, and Thomas's lucid dreaming happens a few hours before he wakes up, we'll probably have to go through several dreams before reaching the correct one. Anything else? Remus shook his head. Logan put his notebook back into his pack and opened the door. The inside shimmered lightly, like a holographic film. Logan poked a finger through it experimentally, then his whole hand, then a foot, then... Remus rolled his eyes, grabbed Logan, and jumped in. The wind whistled in his hair, and Remus grinned as they fell towards what looked like an enormous swath of cotton. Logan landed like an upturned turtle, and Remus laughed as he struggled to roll over with his giant backpack. By the time Logan managed to get to his feet, Remus had already doubled over with laughter. Laugh all you want, Logan said, but I assure you that we will be prepared for anything. He finished and shouldered his pack. Remus wiped tears from the corner of his eyes and got up. Whatever you say, nerd. Remus looked around and kicked at what they were on experimentally. The sky above them was a bright, blinding blue. Remus looked ahead of them. The white swaths went on and on, catching the light and looking incredibly fluffy. Ooh, I get it! Remus exclaimed and ran to the edge of the swath. There was nothing below them, as if the dream had not rendered fully. Remus peered down. We're on a cloud! Logan frowned and looked over the edge as well. But that's impossible. Clouds are made of water and air. There's no way it would be able to hold any... Remus whipped around and caught Logan's hand before the logical side fell through the sudden appearance of a hole in the cloud. Remus put a finger to his lips as he hoisted Logan back up. You may want to keep your reasoning to yourself for now. If you deconstruct the dream before we get to Thomas, who knows what'll happen? Remus said with a wink, plopping Logan back down onto the solid surface. Logan blinked and straightened his pack. Right. Yes. Thank you. Remus hummed as the two walked forward. Oh well, can't have Thomas losing his logic, right? He said, balancing himself on the very edge of the cloud and placing one foot in front of the other. Right, Logan said, eyeing Remus's balancing act. Falling here would produce unknown, possibly dangerous consequences. We should both make an effort to be more careful. Remus laughed, staying on one leg for a moment before continuing. Well, pretty sure no one would miss me if I fall. That's the real reason you brought me instead of Roman, right? Remus may have loved chaos, but he wasn't an idiot. Logan needed a creative side to accompany him because, while neither brother had been in the dreamscape, they were probably the best equipped to handle what was in it. As soon as Logan asked him to come, he figured there must have been an ulterior motive. It was so obvious that Remus wondered why Logan didn't just say that, too. It's not like the others would have objected. Logan frowned. I told you why I wanted you to come rather than Roman. Right, Remus said. The dispensability is just an added benefit. Logan's frown deepened. 
Remus wondered why the nerd, usually so straightforward, was still continuing the charade. That's not... <coughs> Remus jumped back onto the cloud as a bright neon green filled his vision. Logan tried to step back, but his backpack caused him to fall down. Remus looked up. There, just in front of him, so large it was difficult to see around it, was the mascot of famous language teaching program, the Duolingo Owl. Thank you all so much for listening. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like what you hear and you want to read more, you can find the link to the fic and the author in the description. If you want to check out other pod fics I've done, including another one by the same author, you can click on the playlist linked on the screen. See you next time!